How often do you actually see positive examples of Christianity in media? I don't think I really have seen any. This is actually a major problem that, that we have in Hollywood. There are no positive lights, really, within Hollywood. And anything that's Christian is uh, immediately put down. Instead, in Hollywood, we actually see many, many negative portrayals of Christianity. One of the main examples of this is Miss Carmody. So The Mist is a novella by Stephen King. And in a lot of Stephen King's works, you see, oftentimes, that the Christian characters are often these horrible religious nutbag fruitcake zealots. You have The Beast, you have Shawshank Redemption, Carrie. In all these movies, they hide behind, hide behind the Bible and bash people with it. And you kind of get this idea of like, what does Stephen King really think about Christianity? I'd say it's pretty obvious what he thinks about it, but let's just go through The Mist. So The Mist is about this mist or fog that comes over this town in Maine. It's actually a pretty crazy movie, very violent. I do not recommend it uh, for people who are sensitive to those things, spiritually or, you know. So this mist comes over the town and in the mist are all these creatures and monsters that come and kill people. The majority of the film actually takes place within the supermarket of the town. Uh, and in the, in the supermarket, you see all these kind of different characters. You have the main character and his son, you have friends and you have all these neighbors. And then you have this one specific character, Mrs. Carmody. And she is this fanatical zealot uh, who fears God and she inflicts her judgmental attitude on everyone else. Here's a couple scenes of it in action. can be saved, can't they? Yes, some can be brought to heaven's holy gates through your grace. I have to believe that, though I know most will swim in the lake of fire forever. You see her praying this crazy prayer. Eventually she calls the town to sacrifice this person to God's wrath. Seventeen poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice, but he denies it. He points the finger, this Judas in our midst. Don't you know the truth? We are being punished for what? For going against the will of God, for going against his forbidden rules of old, walking on the moon, yes, yes, or, or splitting his atoms, or, 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 or stem cells and abortions, and destroying the secrets of life that only God above has any right to. Punished. The judgment is being brought down upon us. The fiends of hell, you see, they are let loose and star wormwood blazes. No. And it is his fault. Yes, no. it is your fault. No. If you actually watch my last video, you'll see that God does not condone human sacrifice in any way. God never, never, ever endorses that. So that's why it's weird when all these movies, they're always, always showing someone being sacrificed. Uh, the Christian zealots are sacrificing them to appease the wrath of God when it's only in every other culture in the world that they do these things. Never within Christianity, ever, or Judaism. As a believer, I think it's actually really frustrating seeing these kinds of portrayals within media. I think we have this problem for multiple reasons. One, you have these former Christians and atheists making this media, and so they're getting revenge by writing these things. They've suffered abuse while at the name of Christianity, and so now it's their time for revenge and to do their anti-gospel. Uh, so an example of this right now is actually Rhett and Link. They're going on this whole crusade of deconstructing. It's the same thing. They're taking out their hatred and anger of Christianity 
and trying to deconvert as many people as possible by sharing their story. And, and it's very intentional. I don't hate these people at all, and I pray that God would truly get a hold of them, but I think it's kind of indicative of the problem that we have. And I think the other reason is because so many Christians kind of decide to live separately, decide to live apart from the world in a way that, that is not biblical. So many movies. Are, are, are written by secularists and hardly any are written by Christians. And the ones that are made by Christians are pretty much made for Christians. They're not really made to, to reach the lost. So you have this weird like, we make our movies for us and you can watch your movies over there. But it's this weird distinction of why wouldn't you go make movies for them that would bring them in? I think there's nothing wrong with making movies for Christians, obviously, making wholesome content. But we should also then be making content that's not just for us, that's also for for the world. That they'd actually think, actually, this is a really well-made movie, even if I don't agree with it. Like, we should be making movies that do that, but why aren't we? Another character that actually shows this judgmental Christian type is in everyone's favorite show, The Office. Phyllis, I need you to pick up green streamers at lunch. I thought you said green was whorish. No, orange is whorish. Angela is hilarious but she's that stereotypical Hollywood Christian that's hyper judgmental and uh, at the expense of everyone in the show. And she's obviously extremely hypocritical, like being with Dwight and then with Andy and then overlapping and the show calls it out all the time, but she's the biggest hypocrite in the show. And it's no accident that she's a Christian and it's brought up all the time. And she's not a good Christian. If we saw her in the real life, we, I'd probably say she's not really Christian at all. Then we have a more recent show that came out actually this past year called The Last of Us, based on the video game, uh, which is excellent. There's this character, spoilers for those who haven't seen the show and want to watch it, but in the show, you have this character named David, and he is pretty much the leader of this town. It's cold, it's frigid, people are starving. It's a very sad situation, but he is this religious leader that uses the Bible to manipulate people. And so he's quoting it, of course, they're reading from Revelation, and Jeremiah and this verse and that verse all but ultimately you see that he is this religious nutbag Revelation 21 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I've read this passage too many times. Do you remember what comes next? And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. For there will be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither will there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And then even actually in the show, they reveal that he actually isn't even a Christian. He's actually agnostic or atheist, but it's just deeply ironic. It's like, of course, Rain Wilson actually commented on this very trope. So it's funny to see that being tied together, but it's just so tired. Like this doesn't exist for any other character. When they're trying to illustrate someone's a hypocrite, they always use someone who's claiming to be Christian. Always look back in any movie or TV show when they're trying to show that they're hypocrite, what religion are they? They're always quoting the Bible and saying, talking about God's wrath and, and judgment. And then the main character propped up as the good guys, like, oh, that's a little Old Testament, don't you think? What's frustrating is these people, they're not Christians, they don't read the Bible, but they're going off of their own preconceptions and ironically judging Christians and their worldview. That's always the deep irony. They're not really realizing that these characters, these fake characters that they're writing, they're so hyper judgmental. And those characters are always minimizing people and reducing them to a single belief. Yet, we see those very same movies doing the same thing to Christians. And look, I'm not gonna say there's no religious nutbags. I've seen it myself. I've, I've seen someone who's just like her in the mist. These Jezebel-like women who are seeking control and will take it the very second they can, they're able to grasp it. But, I don't know, maybe it's another way. So what do you think? What are some of your favorite, or least favorite, uh, Christian characters and media. I'd love to actually see what they are. So comment down below and I'll see you next video. Bye.